Brain Myths presents Mind Management Not Time Management by David Cadavy The key to productivity is mind management more so than time management. We all have the exact same number of daylight hours each day. How well we can control and harness our brittle mental energy will ultimately determine how productively we use those hours. Imagine if I had been able to write for 15 or 20 minutes each day before continuing to enjoy the rest of my day. This seems impossible, but there was definitely a tactic I could have used to make the process less painful. Three important questions of mind management. I did begin to develop an intuitive understanding of my brain's functioning and how to move through my own mental environment as I wrote. I discovered that I frequently asked myself a few crucial questions. 1. What kind of work do I need to do right now? Is there anything that needs to be done right away, or can I let my mood dictate what I choose to work on right now? 2. What kind of mental state am I in right now? Do I feel like writing a draft, outlining, researching, experimenting, or polishing? 3. Is there something I can do to get myself into the right mental state? Over time, I came to understand that there were various hacks or rituals that could assist me in changing my state of mind. Exercise, massages, various types of music, teas, Epsom salt baths, and amino acids that support neurotransmitters all eventually had their own benefits. Additionally, I had different spaces for different kinds of work. For instance, a cafe in a skyscraper perched above the city was better for higher-level brainstorming, while a dim, cramped area in the public library was better for polishing or research. The objective of mind management is to balance allowing your mind to do the work it wants to do with the work that must be done. Key Takeaways of Mind Management During the book writing process, I didn't have much time to reflect on what was happening, but once the smoke cleared, I started to become more intrigued by what exactly my brain was doing throughout this. This book essentially explains how the various brain regions, neurotransmitters, and brainwaves interact throughout the course of the day. It will be easier for you to understand what is going on in your mind and how to use your limited mental energy if you have a thorough understanding of how your brain functions. Here are some lessons learned and strategies I've developed as a result of my research and testing. Your brain is plastic. Your neurons fire every time, which facilitates subsequent firing of the same pathways. The brain has long been thought to be a static structure that stops changing once a person reaches adulthood, but we now know that's not the case. This implies that every time you think or do something, your brain finds it simpler to repeat that thought or that action. This explains why meditation is so effective and has some pretty obvious implications for positive versus negative thoughts. Love your prefrontal cortex. The newest area of your brain in terms of evolution is the prefrontal cortex. The prefrontal cortex in your brain is in charge of organizing your priorities, making plans, and controlling your urges. Your prefrontal cortex, however, is a tiny but energetic organ. Therefore, when you're tired, it's difficult for you to focus on the bigger picture of what you're doing at the moment or to resist checking Facebook and Twitter every two minutes. Therefore, it's crucial to get enough sleep so that your prefrontal cortex can continue to function properly. You should also set aside time specifically for prioritizing tasks. Fight your amygdala. The oldest of your brain's more ancient brain regions is your amygdala. In a lizard's brain, the amygdala dominates. Your amygdala is highly motivated by fear and wired to protect you from harm. The really challenging aspect is that your body and amygdala communicate before the rest of your brain does. For instance, before your eyes can even alert your brain that this is a snake, your amygdala signals your sympathetic nervous system to speed up your heart rate. Your rest of your brain will then draw the conclusion that I'm afraid of this snake because my heart rate went up. You must be cautious of your amygdala's influence because it always wants you to choose the safe path and will stifle your creativity. Mind Management in Action With the above in mind, here's a few actionable tips you can use to manage your mind effectively. Meditate By meditating with mindfulness, you create neural pathways that help you process stimuli in your immediate environment more effectively, which makes you more composed and deliberate. 
I started with two sessions a day for 10 to 15 minutes for about six months to really get into it. I currently work out once a day. If you genuinely believe that you cannot meditate, try the two-minute hack first. Inability to meditate for two minutes indicates more serious issues than simply being too busy. Make time for planning. Making planning a distinct, special activity has two advantages, in order to plan better, you can do it when your mental energy is high. Additionally, since the planning and prioritizing have already been completed, it frees up your valuable prefrontal cortex to perform other tasks. I like to make a bullet point list of everything happening in the upcoming week as part of my weekly review, which I call. Even if it's on my calendar, it serves as a reminder to consider any particulars I may not have already considered, for instance, if my flight on Wednesday is at 2 p.m., what time should I leave for the airport? Trick yourself into starting. It can be extremely difficult to even begin a task. Your brain won't release enough dopamine to inspire you to start unless you have a specific objective in mind. The 10-minute hack gives you a really straightforward objective. Successfully achieving this has the added advantages of strengthening your prefrontal cortex by helping you resist the urge to pay attention to distractions and making it simpler to continue working on your task after you've started it for 10 minutes. We still have a long way to go in learning how to manage our minds, but this is just the tip of the iceberg in terms of research. What stands out to you about this content? If you're interested, I'd like to elaborate on some of these points. How do you control your thoughts? 